Hey man, what's up? Hey Charles, you've got some good timing. Oh yeah? Why is that? Well, I'm just about finished working on a new feature and I could really use your guidance. Sure, I've got time. Great, let me just uh, share my screen. Oh hey, that's that project Jason was helping you with, right? Yeah, I was having a scalability issue with my interactable objects and uh, he suggested I use interfaces. Nice, so what seems to be the problem? Here, check it out. So I've created this keypad here that I wanna to use to open doors and for a couple of other puzzles. Cool. Thanks. I've got the basic functionality down. I could add input, clear it, and I also have the ability to press this enter button, although it doesn't do anything yet. That's where I need your guidance. Sure, let's have a look at the code. Okay. I think the main classes to focus on are probably the keypad and door classes. Okay, walk me through it. Sure. So the keypad class has a bunch of logic related to adding and clearing input. But as you can see, its enter method is completely empty. I need to add some code to open the door, which has a method called open. Okay. Now, obviously I wouldn't want to reference a door and call its open method directly from the keypad, right? Yeah, because that would create a tight coupling between them. And you already mentioned you wanted to use keypads for puzzles too. Exactly. So the other approach I thought of was to do something similar to my keypad display class, which accesses a keypad's current input each frame. My thought was to create an intermediary class that would reference both a door and a keypad. Then each frame, it would check if the keypad had been unlocked and open the door accordingly. Something like that. Okay. That isn't a bad approach, but it sounds like you aren't a fan. Yeah, I mean, it works, but this whole check is useless once the door is open. If I have a bunch of other doors and puzzles with similar components, they will all be making unnecessary checks for most of the game's runtime. So, I don't know. I just want to explore my other options. Do you have any thoughts? Well, the one thing that jumps to my mind is using a C-sharp event. You know, I thought about that too, but it's been so long since I've used events that Kind of felt intimidating. Oh, no, they're super simple. Trust me, you won't have any issues using them. Yeah, you think so? I guess I was just feeling too lazy to read the documentation. No worries, man, we've all been there. You wanna walk through it together? Sure, if you don't mind. Nah, not at all, happy to help. Go ahead and delete that code and let's add an event to the keypad class. Okay. There. Perfect. So C-sharp events are based on the delegate model, which follows the observer design pattern. The two key points to remember are that an event is a message sent by the object to signal the occurrence of an action, and a delegate is the type that holds a reference to the event method. So in a nutshell, we're gonna define an event that represents the moment that the keypad is unlocked. To do that, you're gonna to need to define your own delegate type. Go ahead and do that now above the awake method. Okay, so that'll be public delegate, and then the next part is the return type, right? Yep, and you can just return void for now. Okay, then the delegate name. How about unlock handler? Sounds good to me. And it doesn't need to take any arguments, so I'll just finish it off with some parentheses. Beautiful. Now use the delegate to define your event. Okay, so public event unlock handler. And what should I call it? The general convention is to use an action verb in the past tense, so you can call it unlocked. Oh yeah, I've seen that before. Unlocked. Nice. Yep, and that's it. The only thing left to do now is to invoke it when the keypad's input value matches its unlock code. Cool, I'll add that condition to the enter method. And then call unlocked.invoke if it's true. Sweet. Now, there are a couple of considerations that we still need to address, but let's wire it up to your door and get it working first. Okay, sounds good. Should we make an intermediary class? Well, we could, but why don't we keep it simple for now? What do you think about subclassing the door class? Huh, yeah, that makes sense. I can call it uh, keypad door, then have it subclass door, of course, add a serialized field for the keypad, and then in the start method, subscribe the door's open method to the unlocked event. Exactly. And by the way, that works out so nicely because door's open method matches the signature of your unlock handler delegate method that we created. Oh yeah, it's kind of like a happy little accident. <laughs> Something like that. Let's switch back to Unity and set up your door. 
Right, so I'll use this interior door here. Add the keypad door component, reference the keypad, and play the scene. Okay. Enter the code. No peeking now. And boom, the door is open. Heck yeah, that looks great, man. <laughs> Thanks. I'm feeling much better about this code. It's definitely more scalable and will be way easier to maintain in the future. Yep, that's the idea. Speaking of which, we still need to address those two things real quick. Oh yeah, that's right. So for the first thing, go ahead and run the scene. Okay. Now delete the keypad door from the hierarchy and unlock the keypad. Sure. See that error in your console? Hmm, missing reference exception. Object of type animator has been destroyed, but you're still trying to access it. What happened? What happened is that your keypad door subscribed to the unlock method on start, but it never unsubscribed when it got destroyed. Oh, so the event fired and tried to trigger a method under an object that no longer exists. Bingo. Do you know what you have to do next? Hmm, let's see. Switch back to the code. And then unsubscribe from the unlocked event in the keypad doors on destroy method. Is that it? Yep, that's right. For now, go ahead and test it again. Sure. Run the scene. Delete the door. Punch in the code. And hey, there's a different error message. Object reference not set to an instance of an object on line 62 in the keypad class. Let's check it out. Okay, let's see here. Line 62. Huh? Unlocked is throwing the error? Is that because... Oh, we unsubscribe. So now the unlocked method is null. You got it. Oh, well, that's easy enough to fix. I'll just use the question mark dot operator. Fun fact, that's actually called the null conditional operator. Oh yeah? I kind of like my name better. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, man. Why don't we switch back to Unity and check it out? Alrighty, start the scene, remove the door, unlock the keypad, and nice, looks like everything works. As always, thank you for your help. Ah, no problem, man. I really do enjoy it, and helps keep me sharp. Still, you're definitely getting a credit in this game. Oh, so this is a game now. I thought this was just another prototype. <laughs> maybe, maybe. The jury's still out, but we'll see. <laughs> well, I'm going to go catch a run before my next meeting, so uh, I'll talk to you later, all right? All right, man. Enjoy. Talk to you later. Bye. A special thanks to my top supporters, Berkwas 3D, Dark Rush Photography, R-Star, Thomas, Trond, Yakub Al-Safari, and Iron Alex. Alex.